let's see what I wrote here, the objective to understand how to figure out the total number of options from an assortment of choices, right, so that's one way to define it here. Fundamental accounting principle is defined more, a little more mathematically, and but still abstract, it uses variables. It says if you can choose one item from a group of m items, uh, like a number of items, right, like 5 or 10, whatever, and a second item from a group of n items, again n and m being numbers, then the total number of two item choices is m times n. So fundamental counting principle is, it's a way of figuring out how many total outcomes there is from a, like a series of choices, let's say, um, an assortment of choices, right? Um, it's a way of figuring out how many total outcomes, how many total different outcomes there are without actually going through every possible scenario. So, well, let's look at example one. Example one is a restaurant offers six appetizers and 14 main courses, and how many ways can a person order a two-course meal? Um, you don't have to go through every single option here to, to figure that out. You could literally just multiply six times 14 to get 84, um, and that literally is how many different ways a two-course meal can be ordered. So without going through every single meal option, ordering an appetizer on a main course, you could know there's 84 possible outcomes. So I think fundamental counting principle is fairly useful, but as with anything in your math classes, it's not like it's going to be useful in your everyday life all the time. It might come up once in a while. And if you get into a technical field, well, that's when you may see a little more um, use. Except the practice one's the same thing, guys. It's um, a restaurant offers 10 appetizers and 15 main courses. And how many ways can you order a two-course meal? Well, you just got to multiply um, 10 times 15 and coming to a total of 150 different ways that you can order an appetizer main course in this context. Again, that would be ordering one of each, one appetizer, one main course, right? So whatever, right? Like, oh, I'm going to order buffalo wings and a steak dinner, right? Or I'm going to order um, egg rolls and a pasta plate, right? That's kind of what that's referring to. So again, fundamental counting principle will tell you how many different ways it can be done without actually going through each option. So. So again, like I said, if you kind of know this topic, you're welcome to go ahead into the um, assignment and work on it. And if you just want to follow my lead, that's fine too. Let's see. So this next one is about making a schedule in college. If all those of you who end up in either a university or junior college for your next step in life, you'll be doing this. You'll be making a schedule. Now, you may not actually go through the motions of calculating how many different ways you can make the schedule, but that's what this problem is saying. This problem is saying you're going to take math, English, and humanities. Based on time blocks and highly recommended professors, there's eight sections of math, five sections of English, and four sections of humanities that you find suitable. Assuming no scheduling conflicts, how many different three-course schedules are possible, right? So assuming you could take any of the math classes along with any of the English classes and any of the humanities classes, how many different schedules are possible? Multiply eight, because there's eight math classes, you're going to pick one, times five, five English classes, times four. And if you just multiply that through, 8 times 5 times 4, you come up with there is 160 different ways this schedule can be um, formed from the 8 math classes, 5 English classes, and 4 humanities classes. So um, again, 106. Normally when I plan my schedule in college, it was always me trying to get just like a Tuesday-Thursday schedule or a, a Monday-Friday or, or trying to minimize the, the amount of days I showed up. So I never really thought about how many different ways it could be done, but but you definitely try to piece together a schedule that is convenient. So anyhow, that one had 160 options. Let's see this one. A pizza can be ordered with two choices of size, medium or large. Three choices of crust, thin, thick, or regular, and five choices of toppings. Ground beef, sausage, pepperoni, bacon, or mushrooms. How many different one-topping pizzas can be ordered? Notice how it specified one topping. Um, that's so, you know, the um, if it just said how many different pizzas can be ordered, that is, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> but, but either way, um, if how many different one-topping pizzas? Here's the two here. Stands for the fact that it's there's two options. Medium for size, medium or large. And the three here stands for the crust. 
um, three options, thick, thin, or regular. And the five stands for, well, there's five options for a topping, right? And you can read through those. So if you just multiply two times three times five, you'll see there's 30 different one topping pizzas that are possible, right? It might be a, a medium thin crust pepperoni or a large thick crust sausage, you know? Again, we're kind of, we were given specific parameters that it's, it's a one topping pizza. So moving right along, guys, I'm going to look at these problems again, like I said, just try to gloss over them. This next one is um, a car, um, a lightweight three vehicle car. Suppose you could order, so it's a custom order, you could order such a car with um, a choice of nine possible colors, right? Pick one color out of nine possible. You could order it with or without air conditioning. You can order it electric or gas powered, and you can order it with or without an onboard computer. So um, in how many ways can this car be ordered with regard to these options? Well, you have four choices to make. The color, and there's nine different colors. And then do you want AC or not? That's two options. It's this two right this two right here is do you want a gas or electric that's two options and then this last one is <clears throat> do you want it with or without an onboard computer so again there's four choices that need to be made the first choice has nine options and the next three choices have two options each so multiplying through nine times two times two times two comes to the conclusion 72 different ways that this car can be ordered so um, so again you're seeing you really just you're just multiplying through to figure out how many different um, ways or how many different outcomes a given scenario has um, right how many possible outcomes any given scenario might have at least in these cases um, these cases are specific though like we know exactly how many choices there are to make and at each choice, right, every time I make a selection, there's a certain number of selections to choose from. So like this one's talking about a 10 question test. It's multiple choice and each question has four options, right? A, B, C, and D, let's say. So how many different ways can this test be answered? Well, you figure 10 questions means um, you're going to excuse me, you're going to multiply 10 numbers and the way you're going to, the numbers you're going to multiply are dependent upon how many choices there are at each, you know, each time I have to make a choice, how many choices are there. So, um, so the first question has four choices and they all have four choices, right? All 10 questions have four choices. So you could just multiply through here, four times four times four times four, 10 times, AKA four to the 10th power to see that a multiple choice test that has 10 questions with four choices each, let's say A, B, C, and D, actually has well over a million possible outcomes of how the answers can be chosen. Um, 1,048,576 ways to answer these questions. Um, again, that's just multiplying four times four times four times four. 10 times, aka 4 to the 10th power, because it's 10 questions, and each question has four possible answer choices, and you're only picking one, right? So some someone could just answer all A's. Every question they answer A. It's one way to answer it. Someone could answer all B's, right? That's another way to answer it. Someone could answer A for the first question, and then B for all the rest, right? So, so or someone could go like A, B, C, D. DCBA, ABCD, right? So, so you get hopefully you're getting the point of like what it means by how many different ways you can answer, right? You can answer every question D, or the first nine questions D, and the tenth question A, right? There's a lot of different ways this can be done. That's why it's well over a million, a million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six different ways to be exact. Um, this one's the same thing. This one's only six questions, and each question only has three. Um, choices. So this one's just three choices times three choices times three times three times three times three. It's three multiplied six times because it's you have six choice six questions that that you have to answer, and each question has three choices. So three times three times three six times, aka three to the sixth power, for seven hundred and twenty nine total ways to answer for this test. So. Um, not nearly as many as the million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six, but um, still a good amount seven twenty nine, but pretty substantially different from 
that one, the last one that is. This next one, I actually did this wrong. I did example six wrong, right? Telephone numbers in the US begin with three digit, three digit area code numbers, followed by seven digit local telephone numbers. You guys should know that, right? 626, 394, 1320, right? It's a three digit, three digit area code and a seven digit number for a total of 10 numbers. Again, that's for the US, right? which makes sense for us because we are here in the US. It says area codes and local telephone numbers cannot begin with zero or one. That means when you begin the area code, it, it can be zero or one. It can be the first number can be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's eight numbers that can be the beginning of an area code. Um, also the phone number itself, the, lo the local phone number itself, again, can't start with the zero or one. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eight options for the first number of the area code and eight options for the first number of the phone number. Other than that, you can use zero or one. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 options for all the digits other than the first digit of the area code and the first digit of the phone number. If you look at what I did here, my bad, I made a mistake. The first number, there's only eight options, not nine. I'm not sure how I ended up putting a 9 there because it's pretty obvious it should be an 8. At least to me it's pretty obvious it should be an 8 here. Because again, my the choices I have for the first number of the area code, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 8 choices for the first number of the area code, not 9. I don't know why I put a 9 there. After that... 0 and 1 become an option. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 10 options. That's why there's 10s there. So um, this should have been an 8 times 10 times 10. And this one should have been an 8 also. Again, I I, I messed this one up. I'm gonna, I'll redo this one. The 10s are good. After the first digit, which has 8 options, not 9, these should all be 10s because there is 10 options to choose those other ones. So the correct answer for this one won't be won't be that 8 billion number. I'm going to go onto my dot count for this one, actually. So, in example 6, this is what it should have been. Um, example six it should have been this. It should have been. Let me just make up a phone number first. Six two six um, three nine four. I don't know eighteen eleven. This sounds like a number I've heard before, but either way, um, right? So so in a phone number might look like this, but in in reality, um, how many numbers are possible in all of the United States? Right, the first digit can't be 0 or 1, leaving 8 possible digits for the first one. After that, 0 and 1 are fair game. So now there's 10 options for the second digit of the area code, and another 10 options for the third digit. Now the phone number itself. The local phone number can't start with a 0 or 1. So there's 8 options, as I kind of already pointed out to you guys what those are, 2 through 9. There's eight options for the first number in the phone number after that. Eli. Yes. After that, ten options for all the other numbers, guys. So hopefully this makes sense to you again. Since the first number can't be whoops, I missed one here. Um, since the first number can't be a zero or one, there's only eight options for that first number in the area code as well as the phone number after that. When zero and one become an option, there's ten numbers that can, you know, be selected. Anything zero through nine. So this is the proper calculation. What you'll find is you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have eight tens. So you're actually multiplying ten eight times. When I do that which makes for 10 to the 8th power, but then you multiply by 8 also. It doesn't matter what you can order. Sorry, you can multiply 8 times 10 times 10 times 8 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. You could do that. 
Or you could just take 10 to the 8th power and then multiply by 8 twice. Again, since you're just multiplying, you're not doing any adding, subtracting, or dividing, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. So you should definitely be using a calculator, and it probably is most efficient to just take 10 to the 8th power times 8 times 8 for a total of about 6.4 billion. Okay. So, so again, my answer in these notes, I did mess up, sorry about that, but it should be 6 billion, 400 million possible US phone numbers according to these parameters. Now, we don't have anywhere near that many people here, so I think we're good to have phone numbers to last us forever. But again, that is the fixed version of example 6. And, um, and then practice six, you guys. Practice six. An electronic gate can be opened by entering five digits on a keyboard. By entering five digits on a keyboard containing the digits zero through nine. How many different keypad sequences are possible if the digit zero cannot be used as the first digit? So, guys, once again, you see... Um, the first number can be 1 through 9, so the it can't be 0, right? It says it can't be 0. So the first number has 9 choices. However, the next four numbers have 10 choices. 0 becomes available right after the first number. So 0 through 9 can be used, meaning there's 10 digit choices for the next four numbers. So multiplying this through 9 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 90,000 possible sequences for the code for that gate. So that's what we'll be doing. I'll spend a few minutes working on the assignment and um, 